Corey Blaine, longtime friend, uh, professionally trained drummer. You could say that. <laughs> uh, thanks for doing the tuning video. Um, so this is part of like the, I guess, clockwork percussion um, podcast series in which we just try to get to know um, anyone that comes by a little bit better. And uh, first things first, if you want to just explain a little bit about yourself, your background, and why you like to play drums. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, thanks for having me. Um, I started playing drums, I think, I'd say percussion first in junior high at Anson. Uh, joined concert band or marching band, whatever it was, and was put on the bells uh, or the glockenspiel. Uh, if you can't see my air quotes, that's actually what it's called. Um, and there's a picture somewhere, but I, I had to wear the worst harness and like rig setup. It was padded, but the padding was all covered in duct tape. And it sat around your neck to where it looked like one of those travel pillows. Oh, man. And it was like they must have just bent electrical conduit and like made this rack for this thing to sit on. And it was <sighs> the worst contraption ever. But that's where I learned how to play percussion stuff. Um, was never really allowed to sit behind the drum kit at school there just because it would have been too loud and too noisy and too, I don't know, the teacher didn't like us anyway. So That was Mr. S. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that guy was a piece of work. Yeah. Did um, that Pearl by piece kit. Yeah. Played, played guitar at that point. And then once we got into high school, uh, this, this kid, Ian Douglas, that was in band, um, I had, I had asked all my friends, I'm like, oh, I'm looking to get a drum kit. Uh, does anybody have one that I could just like try out so I know what to look for, what not to look for, like how to, how to change heads, stuff like that before I get my own kit. And Ian was nice enough to let me borrow this drum kit that he never asked for back. Ian Douglas, shout out. Thank you very much. Um, that was, I don't know if you remember a point in time when Alan Arjad was playing a orange and white striped drum kit way back in the day. No. If you ever if you ever got a chance to see it, I repainted that drum kit to be that. And I gave it to Alan at one point and, you know, it lived a healthy life. It's probably in somebody's garage somewhere, I <laughs> hope. Um, from there, I started playing in bands on both guitar and drums. Uh, I think the first one I played in on drums was Bring It Back uh way back then with Corey and joey and this guy john plass uh who i met playing with adora and all those guys up in irvine um and then from there out of high school went to school for music production at golden west college um started playing some shows and stuff out of town uh primarily with bring it back with adora we did a i think we did like a short run with stick to your guns back then um and from there, I became kind of known as the fill-in guy to where, like, on that tour, we were doing Adora sets. I was filling in on guitar for one of the opening bands on that set as well. And then I got asked to fill in on drums with Shane's band, One Mark, One Mission, at one point, And we opened up for All Shall Perish. And we had, like, one rehearsal, maybe four hours. Wow. And it was, it was wild. It was fun. Um, and then, let's see. I believe I moved... Moved out to the desert like 2009, came back in 2010, and by the end of that year, my now wife, um, Amanda, had convinced me to apply for MI and go to school for actual music instead of just music recording and technology stuff. Uh, so I did that, graduated 10 years ago, 2013. Wow. Uh, and there I met, I met a bunch of people that I wouldn't say they've helped a ton, but they're a, a great, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're a great sounding board to where I can show, I can show guys where I'm like, I know that this group of people, I can send them a, a track or whatever, and I'll get honest opinions about it. And they're, they're cats who can play just as well as I can, just as well as you can. Um, and they've gone on to do big things. Like a couple of the guys I went to school with a, now respectively play for like Big Sean, Kendrick, um, like that level of stuff. And wow. those dudes, they're they're out there killing it. Um, I've, I've always stuck to the, the heavier side of things when it comes to drums. Um, at, while I was at MI, played a bit of a, let's say, let's call it radio friendly rock. Um, very radio friendly rock. Uh, that was fun. Played a, played a few interesting gigs with that. Um, played some cover stuff too. Played in a 
played in a cover band for a little bit there. Um, outside of that, mainly it's been hardcore stuff, metal stuff, Sister Us, Seizures, uh, The Ocean Apart before that. Um, that's about it. Other than playing stuff on stringed instruments. Wow. Very cool. You're like the Swiss Army musician. I try, to be. <laughs> I try to be. I try to be. Yeah, playing bass in a band currently. Played guitar back then. I also play drums. So call me. Call me if you need me. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So what are you focused on right now? Uh, as I mentioned, playing bass in a band with a couple friends, uh, Mike, JP, David. They were all in a band called Common War. Mike and JP are also in Dead by Stereo. Um, that band's called The Sun Must Die. And we're about to be releasing stuff soon. Who knows when exactly it'll be, but sooner than later, we've got everything ready. So awesome. we just got to figure out dates. Okay. We'll keep our eyes out for that. Um, if you had one desert island drummer that you could listen to the rest of your life, who would that be? Your favorite drummer of all time? Oh, that's so tough. One for the rest of time. Like for it's a toss up between for me Bonham or Riley from Thrice. Okay. Just because like first time hearing Bonham, uh, you know, hearing Led Zeppelin in general is mind blowing um, to anybody who's musically inclined, even if they're not, and and they can just kind of pick out that there's something special there. Like it, it it changed me listening to them as a as a kid. I'm like, okay, I'm, this is cool. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, and then getting to see Thrice. And seeing it up close and personal and, and like being so heavily invested in a band that sounded similar enough to stuff that I wanted to play and being able to like try and shoot for that. So I love John Bonham. Let's go with Riley from Thrice. Okay. 100%. Yeah. Well, it, Thrice is really unique in the fact that they started right down the street. Yep. They've rehearsed in this very building yeah. that we're recording in. Um, they have been the same four guys the entire time. Two of them are brothers, including Riley. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he plays like these awesome cue drums, which I'm so fascinated by with, uh, I don't know what material his is in particular. I believe he's got a couple of kits. Okay. Um, in the like the brief times that I've gotten a chance to chat with him about it, uh, I know one of his kits, I believe, is a stainless steel shelled kit. Um, I think he's talked about it on... One of the record breakdowns where like the behind the scenes stuff, he breaks down which songs he used what kits on. And I want to say it's to be everywhere on that record. Mm -hmm. You can definitely tell the drum tones change. Oh, wow. Um, and it, it's because there's different, there's several different kits that are on that record. Um, the stainless steel one, I know for sure. I want to say he's got either like a copper or uh, I made. I've seen their copper kits. I'm not sure if he has one, but I know he's got a, a black one as well. So mm -hmm. whether that's metal or wood, what it's made out of, I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. um, the stainless steel one, though, yeah, things, it's it looks gorgeous and yeah. it sounds so good. Well, yeah. you said you just saw him. What kit was he playing? I'm pretty sure it was the stainless steel one because it just looked like yeah, like just metal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he's been playing those a while. Uh, another unique thing about Thrice that. Um, I've come to appreciate is that we've been into them since like almost their beginning. At least for me, I saw their illusion of safety show at triangle. I'm sure you were there too. Yeah, I was at that show. Um, I actually, I saw them for the first time. I want to say it was maybe eighth grade, summer of eighth grade. Uh, still going to St. Andrews. And one of the, the youth pastors was like, Oh, my friend's band is playing at this skate demo. You had me hooked at skate demo at that point. <laughs> And we go to, I think it was Mariner's Church in like Turtle Rock or wherever that is, like Newport, Irvine area. Right. Um, and Thrice was not the headlining band because that was Dogwood. Uh, and the band right before Thrice was a band called Off the Record. They, they were just as good as Thrice, but Thrice had something different going on. Like the kids went nuts. Saw that and I'm like, okay, I'm hooked on this band. How do I get more? Like later that summer, Travis's mom took me, Brandon, Alan, Travis, all up to Chain Reaction for the first time to go see Thrice because they were opening up for International Noise Conspiracy. Wow. And we had no idea who they were at the time. That was wild. Uh, and it's just 
it's been on from there. Yeah. And they're they're on 20 years of uh, Artists in the Ambulance right now? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and then every record that they do is like st- like a new standard. I remember when they released um, – like everything after Artists for me, I was like busy with other stuff, and I, I had to go back to get into that. But sure. I got into Beggars when that came out in, what, like 09 or something? I think somewhere around there, yeah. Yeah, 2009 or 10. And it, it's like a perfect record. And it's it, incredible. It was like a watershed moment for them where like it was like a reinvented style. It was almost like a grunge, like really opened up, really like capable in songwriting. Absolutely. And then their musicianship altogether is like, what the hell? And then everything after that is like, to me, that record is kind of like this weird midpoint where they totally shifted gears. And I could be wrong because I haven't really listened to the Alchemy Index too much. But. Ooh, that's a – that whole – project stands on its own because it is like each record has such a distinct sound and and from what i understand there was a distinct purpose in doing it that way and it's just so interesting to hear a band go from you know playing circle pit parts and like fast sing-alongs with the octave chords you know it just sounds like melodic punk hardcore and then you come out with the alchemy index and you've got air and water and those are some of the most beautiful songs like not to mention the earth earth soundtrack some of the acoustic stuff that dustin did like just incredible work and it it's all the same band it's all the same members and they're they're able to pull all this together and make it cohesive and make it work yeah it's it's amazing they should be like way bigger than they are they're like slept on by rock well i'll keep them this size so we can keep seeing them at house of blues anaheim i don't want to have to go to i don't want to have to go to staples or whatever it's called now keep them this size yeah pay them pay them more absolutely (laughs) totally fine just keep them this size let them play five nights in a row who cares right just keep them this size (laughs) okay so riley breckenridge is the number one for you um we talked about this in the in the video we just did and I want to go over it again, but what sticks do you use? I am playing the Promark uh, American Hickory TX2BW. Um, and why do you like those? I like them because they can withstand the abuse of playing with die-cast hoops, um, at least for me. And they're not overly long. They're thick enough to kind of feel like a marching stick without being so heavy um, and without feeling like you know the bottom end of a baseball bat. Uh, and I like, I like the shape of the tip on it. Um, a little bit flatter than most, but still has a rounded top to it. Um, in my mind provides maybe a little bit more surface area for the tip when you're doing, uh, delicate or like intricate stuff. Um, it just, it works for me. Very cool. Uh, what kit do you play now? Right now I've got a Tama... Silver Star that is all birch. Uh, it was originally like a red, reddish brown stain color that was like a matte finish. Uh, I've stained it one time to where I had like black fading into the natural color um, and kept it as a matte finish there. And then while I was in seizures, I took the four like the four pieces that I was mainly using, so the kick, uh, two toms, and sanded them down gray primered all of it interior and exterior uh painted the black like a matte matte uh, uh light absorbing black like at least what you could find in spray cans um yeah what's that called it starts with a v um it's it's it something you can get at like most hardware stores it's okay. it's like the 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 camouflage uh colors to where it's like super dry and matte finish and it and it like kind of pulls in light it's like very black or whatever it's called right um and then the interior i did like a a teal color so where like when you rock if you rock clear heads and you you shine some light through it you can see the color on it um it it changed the sound of the drums a bit because birch shells are a bit punchy uh or at least they can be it kind of mellowed that out a bit um and i run the tunings pretty wide open on those so uh kicks pretty pretty wide open toms are pretty low and and uh beefy and then the snare i've got is a 13 by 7 ludwig they call it a black magic um but it's a it's basically a black beauty uh i think it's either black nickel or black chrome over brass 
uh, and the difference between the Black Magic and the Black Beauty, I believe, is the just the diecast hoops. I don't think the strainer has anything to do with it. I could be wrong. Mm. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, so that's it's called Vanta Black. Vanta Black. Yeah. That's the one. It's not. It's not that color. It's it's trying to be okay. that color where like it can pull in light. Yeah. Um, but it it's. It's definitely not that. That stuff's like super expensive. Right. One guy owns it and he doesn't let other people use it. Oh man. And he's kind of a he's kind of a knob. Yeah, what apparently so. <laughs> so you play mainly a four piece kit, but how many pieces all together is your kit? Uh six. six. So I've got two up uh, two up, two down, kick drum, uh, and I sold the snare drum that it came with. Okay. because uh, the the birch snare I didn't want to break it. Because I play hard and it was very thin. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah. Okay. I've, 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 I've had a collection of snares from time to time. Right now I'm at one. Uh, oh, no. I've got an old marching snare as well. The One of the old blue ones that Newport Harbor used to used to use. H gave me one. And it's like a 1950s 50s or 60s Camco. Whoa. Uh, blue sparkle with like the big DW style uh, lugs on there. The white white badge that looks like it's a george way badge but it's camco cool. uh and it, things like i think it's like 15 inches wide it's like this big like this deep Whoa. so maybe like 12 inches deep maybe holy hell and it's it's a beast it's got the the str- parts where you can strap it on and like throw it over like an old school like traditional style drum yeah it hangs off to the side and it, thing's a beast yeah jeez. i have no i have no use for it but <laughs> i'm like this thing's cool i might like eventually turn it into like a little kick drum for a cocktail kit yeah like, it would be it'd be rad very transportable cool to hang on to and like, yeah keep around a conversation piece in the yeah. living room i've gotten a i got a, a response from dave elich i sent him a picture of it because he's a big camco guy and i'm like dave check this out and he's like oh that thing's rad that was about the entire interaction but okay you know <laughs> Dave Village thought it was cool. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, what's your dream kit? Money's not an object. Yeah. Ooh. I'd still, I would still probably stick with the Tama, Tama brand of stuff, just because I do, I love their drums, mm-hmm. and they they produce stuff with like such a variety of of woods that you can. Like you can get any sounds out of them, and they always look gorgeous, especially when you get into like their star classic stuff, mm-hmm. or their their just their star line. Um, that's still exclusive. I think the star line's exclusively made in Japan still. Mm. Um, and so probably a one of the Birch Babinga star classics. Wow. Uh, and there was a there was a finish that they did back in the day that was. It was like black and orange staining, but only around the center of the drum and kind of looked splotchy to where it looked like it was like embers, like oh. almost like flame embers. Whoa. And it was the wildest looking kit. My One of my uh, private lesson teachers at MI is a Tama artist and had one of those kits. And I saw him play live one night and I'm like, Jeff, those things, what are they? How do I get some? Like those are the, a, the most beautiful drums I've ever seen. And they sounded so good. Like even during soundcheck, turns the mics off. You could hear him from the back of the venue clearly. Mm. Granted, he's a monster player. His name's Jeff Bowders. Uh, does like double kick instructional stuff. Mm. Uh, he wrote a he wrote a book like uh, instructional book for double kick stuff. <laughs> monster player. A book about yeah. double kick. Yeah. Wow. Monster That's player. Awesome. He teaches a class about it at MI. Um, double bass drumming. I think is just simply what it is. And you run through like check patterns with your feet and wow. like you just do crazy stuff like that it's it's a lot of fun man i uh, want to enroll or apply just to see if i can get into that section <laughs> dude i think his i think his lessons are available online oh, like cool. some of that stuff and i think i might even still have some of the uh the coursework the sheet music if you want it i can i can try and dig it out check it out yeah uh, come across it but yeah that that kit just because the interior of the of the of the drum the interior applies was babinga i think the birch is in the center um so the interior is this like deep almost rosewood color and then the out the exterior is that black and orange finish on it and it came with like i think it's like black nickel hardware everything all the hoops are die cast on every drum with the exception of the kick Mm. um and their their mounting system the way that they do it they've got something built into the lug itself into like the housing of the lug versus hanging it off of 
the tension rod itself. Mm. Um, so you're not getting any dampening effect from hanging it off of the rim, mm -hmm. and it allows the drum to sing naturally without without any impedance. And it, it allows like their tiny little toms, their eight inch toms and ten inch toms sing like crazy. And the 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 birch babinga, the babinga portion of it kind of mellows out and rounds out the bottom of the tone of a lot of those drums. So like any weird overtones you might have gotten from higher pitch drums previously could very well be mellowed out with those drums and they just they sound so good and they're like i i don't know if i'd want to do that for the snare um ideally i i love the snare that i have mm -hmm. uh but if i could get not even not even one of those like ultra famous like super rare old bell brass snares from the 80s that tama made because those are you're never gonna find one for cheap it's not gonna <laughs> happen uh but this is your dream kit money's my no object yeah if money's no object give me give me that old 80s tama bell brass that was on every record back then okay weighs like 30 pounds it's like three Holy millimeter shit. brass solid shell it's just monster snare drum uh I wouldn't even want a ton of drums, to be honest. Like, I'd want maybe a five-piece, mm. one up, two down, maybe two kick drums to be fun. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Cymbals, keep it simple. Ride, two crashes, maybe three. No, three. Third would be over there. China would be over on this side. Uh, I play Sabian currently. Okay. Um, With the exception of my ride, if I could find a ride in Sabian that matched what I have. uh, It's a minor 22-inch heavy ride the it's got a crack in it and i cut mm. it out and it still sounds great oh cool like even with the crack it sounds great um get it, me mad at that it got me all the way through mi like it helped me or helped me graduate the symbol helped me graduate <laughs> um but no it was with me i got it while i was at mi and i've had it since then mm -hmm. um it's been on every tour i've played drums on cool it's been on every record i've played drums on um yeah dream kit though to wrap it up Thomas Star Classic, Birch Babinga, Black Flame Exterior, uh, one up, two down, two kicks, Bell Brass Snare, Sabian Cymbals. Here we are. <laughs> I, I want to play it when it <laughs> becomes a reality. Yeah. Um, all right, so the last thing would be if, uh, if you were speaking to a beginner drummer and you had to impart one tip, what would that be? That's one tip. I mean, outside of just have fun, like outside of that, because that, that should be, you should be enjoying yourself while you're doing it. For sure. First and foremost. Um, what could help them achieve the level of fun that they should be having more easily? Figuring out, I don't know, um, this may not be like advice, but figuring out what you want out of it. Like how, like how far do you want to take it from the jump? Do you just want to learn how to, you know, be able to, keep up with your friends and then just jam in the garage on the weekends do you want to go out and tour the world and make this your profession mm -hmm. like there there's a there's not a choice that has to be made but if you want to enjoy it the most figure out what you want out of it um and then from there you can choose to evolve your skills accordingly uh i know for me playing drums i wanted to I wanted to go to MI to be able to, once I was done, get a phone call and be like, hey, we need someone at this date and have the experience where I can be like, oh, it's this style of music. Here's kind of what I can expect to get into. Listen to it in, in through the, the ways that I've learned how to like learn songs and, and pull apart things in the song and, and be able to play them. I, I wanted to be that guy where they can just call me, give me a couple days notice and I'll be there. And I'd be I'd be able to do that. And I helped me do that in a way to where uh, not only do I feel comfortable in my playing doing that, but also the, the skills meeting those people and like getting your name out there and like making sure that your name is there in, in people's minds. Um, and I feel like I got what I wanted out of it because I I knew what skills I needed to improve to be able to play the stuff I wanted to play at a high enough level to be able to try and tour on it. Um, and I, I feel like I got there. I feel like it was mission accomplished for me. Um, and that could be totally different for everybody. Sure. You know? Um, yeah, just make sure you know what you want out of it and keep it fun. 
that's that's really it. Don't bother. You don't have to worry about reading music. Just make it fun. Cool. Yeah. Corey Blaine, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me, man. You Anytime. Bet. Yeah, dude.